don't know a tremendous lot about you. I do know you live in Cardiff. Is that right? Or have I got that wrong? That tri oh, pardon me, right. Okay, Lad Tristan. Right. Okay, that's right. All right. Lives in Lad Tristan. And I believe you go to a church normally in Cambridge, but you also go to Faith Church Rogie. And funny enough, we had a lot here from Faith Church Rogie, um, Jason. And he, he was very brave, Jason, because he actually preached a very personal message. And uh, he's the youth leader of the Faith Church. And uh, we enjoyed Jason very much. So it's a blessing. Come on, come, John. Come, 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 come. Hallelujah. You know the rules in this church. There are none. <laughs> All right? We're totally dependent on the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So, whatever you want to share with them. Amen. Thank you very much. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be with you again. And uh, I loved it the last time, I loved it again. Just the uh, freedom in God's house. Amen. It should never be any different, should it? You never be repressed in God's house. You should never, you should never, you should never feel the shackles in God's house. That's right. right, amen. In God's house, it's like, you know, come, just as my children, as, as, and even if you're not this morning, you can be, but God says, come. Yes. If, if you're heavy laden, there's rest, there's joy in God's house, there's peace in God's house. And uh, I feel blessed already, anyway. Hallelujah. So it's good to be with you this morning. Thanks for the welcome. I want to read the story this morning, Luke chapter 19. And it's the story of uh, Zacchaeus being converted. And sometimes the more you read something, the, you just think, okay, well, I've already read that, Lord, I know that story. But you read it again, and God always, always got something new. Yeah, amen. It never, never grows old. Luke chapter 19. He talked about Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through, and there was a man by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and he was rich. Very important. Zacchaeus was trying to see who Jesus was and wasn't able because of the crowd because he was small in stature. He was short. <laughs> so he ran on ahead, climbed up into a tree, a sycamore tree, in order to see him, for he was about to pass. That through that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down for the day I must stay at your house. And he hurried and came down and received him gladly. And when they saw it, they all began to grumble, saying, He has gone to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of all my possessions I will give to the poor. And if I have defaulted anyone of anything, I will give back four times as much. And Jesus said to him, The day salvation has come to this house, because he too is the son of Abraham, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And that included me too. Amen. I was lost. We were all lost. We were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. That's what the Bible says. And thank God he made a way back to himself. Amen. And even with Zacchaeus, we have, we have to understand the background. Some of you may well be familiar, but I, I don't want to assume anything. Uh, Zacchaeus being the chief tax collector, in those days it wasn't like Her Majesty's tax collection system as it is right now, done with utmost integrity and honesty. It was a situation where the, the tax collectors in those days, everybody was looking at each other. Yeah. <laughs> Pray for those in authority that you've already done. In those, you think about it back now, in those days, the tax collectors could pretty much take what they wanted. So the Romans had their bed, where they would say, I, I don't know what the percentage was, but as a tax collector, if you turned up and said, okay, the Romans have told me that i got to take 20% off you, it was, it, up to them, they could take 30, 40% and keep that extra in their back pocket. So it's not surprising that they became very rich. And that was the norm, that was the cultural norm, that was what was expected. It, it, it was almost... Um, well, and, and of course, if you didn't pay, there were repercussions for it. Okay, so it was a very corrupt system. So Zacchaeus was a rich man, and this is why they hated the tax collectors. It wasn't because it's uh, taking my wealth, earn money. It wasn't just that. They were, they were corrupt, generally speaking. They were 
very corrupt and, and, and take them basically what they wanted. They come into your house, they might want to take your tax, but they might admire your phone, fine phone china on the, on the mantelpiece or your, your nice trinkets on the side or whatever the case may be. Thank you. And they decide to take those and you had to give them up. This is why they hated the tax collectors. Zacchaeus wasn't well liked, as you can imagine, where he lived. He wasn't well liked. And so, it says here, Jesus entered Jericho and was, was passing through. Now that's an important statement. Because a few times we see it all through scripture, Jesus is, he's, he's got his mind to go someplace and he's just passing through. Yeah. And periodically, and I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but periodically you see that Jesus gets stopped along the way. And he doesn't stop because he sees a need, he stops because the need sees him. He doesn't just pass by blind Bartimaeus and, and, and oh, there's a blind man and I'm the son of God and I have the ability to heal, so can I pray for you, brother? He doesn't do that. You see in, in the story of blind Bartimaeus, he's, he's walking by and what happens is blind Bartimaeus, uh, uh, is, he obviously he can't see, but he's, he says, who, who, what's all the commotion? And somebody says to him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And on that bit of information, he starts calling out, yeah. shouting out, Son of David, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Uh, so it wasn't the fact that Jesus saw the need, not that he couldn't see the need, but there's something inside of us that when we call out to God, it invokes a different response. So God can see what we need. He's not blind to anything. He's all seeing, all powerful. But the question is, how desperate are we to call out to him? Amen. The reality is that God is sometimes, you know, we're looking for God, but the reality is God is looking for us. Amen. And so we say, my Lord, can you, can you see? Can you see? I mean, there's another time when he healed a blind man, and blind man. Blind man, yeah. You can imagine, you can imagine being one of the disciples, and he goes up to him and says, what do you want me to do for you? My Lord, I was blind, and he's quite quite obvious but that's not that's not the question see sometimes we want God to do things for us or we need God to do things but we don't ask him for that we ask him for something else perhaps we need a touch in our body but if Jesus was to say what do you want me to do well Lord just bless my grandchildren and that, that's that's good in itself we need that we need to pray for our grandchildren Sometimes we need to be specific about us and say, Good Lord, what about me? Lord, will you touch me today? And sometimes in all of our life, periodically through time, we can be busy in life, we can be busy doing this, and, and the reality is, in a sense, Jesus is, is, is passing through. And as he passes you today, what are you going to do? Are you going to shout that, Jesus, save me, Jesus, heal me, Jesus, deliver me, Jesus, you know, I got a tax bill I can't pay, and it's not a corrupt system like it was back then, but I got a tax bill. Help me, Lord. Whatever the case may be, or we're going to allow it to pass through. And something doesn't see your need. He is full of compassion, abounding in mercy. He's just waiting for us to speak it out. Amen. Just to say, Lord, have mercy on me. So Jesus was passing through, and there was a man by the name of Zacchaeus. He was not just any old tax collector, he was the chief, he was the boss. He was the one who controlled everything. He was rich. And Jesus was trying to see who Jesus was, but he couldn't because of his stature. He was short. Now sometimes when it comes to walking with God, we'll encounter various obstacles in our path. Zacchaeus' obstacle was the fact that he, he couldn't see him. There's something about being able to see what you want, or see who you want, isn't it? Being able to see, especially in this context, more than anything else in the world, being able to see Jesus. We see Jesus high and lifted up. Yeah. We see Jesus for who he is. The great physician, the great healer, the great emancipator, the, the great deliverer, the great healer. We see him for who he is. Zacchaeus had heard about this man, Jesus, just like Bartimaeus had, just like, you know, the woman with the issue of blood who who went over and above and she pushed through the crowd. Everybody was telling her, shush, shush, you shouldn't be here. Because according to the law, she was unclean because of her issue of blood. She shouldn't have been there, culturally speaking. 
But she said, I've had 18 years of this, and I've had enough. Here's a man who can do something with my situation yeah. in this day and age. And I don't care what you say, yeah. I don't care if it offends anybody, I need to get to that man. Yeah. It's Jesus who's yeah. passing through. Yeah. If she had just accepted it, she would have probably would have died ill. It's still with this issue. But because of her tenacity, I know that tenacity is not one of the fruits of the Spirit, but I know that. <laughs> <laughs> but I think there's something in just having a bit of persistence and perseverance and pushing through the trial. Calling out to him, have mercy on me. And Zacchaeus, what, what, what's he going to do? Uh, well, I can't see anything, I'm just too short. We do that very often in Wales, don't we? Well, I haven't had the education. Lord, I don't need the Bible so Whatever, and we just put up with things as they are. And sometimes we just need a little bit of Zacchaeus' spirit. Zacchaeus isn't even saved. He isn't even following Jesus. He, he just heard about him at this moment in time. And he's, he's almost like he's showing the disciples up. He's just got this desire. Something's inside of him that says, I have to see this man. Just pass him through. I don't have to shake his hand. I don't need to get him to pray for me. That comes later. He said, I just want to see him. And I'm not going to allow my current circumstances or obstacles to stand in the way of me doing that. What are the obstacles in, in your way, in your path from, from serving and following God and, and really going for it 100% like you know you should? We, we sang that song earlier about destiny. And some of us have a destiny in our hearts. And, and, and the reason that we're feeling some kind of disappointment is because we know we're not walking in that destiny right here right now. How long will you walk in that disappointment? How long will you walk in that frustration? And that frustration, you can do something about it because Jesus has set you free to be able to fulfill what he's called you to do. Don't put up with just being short. You know what I'm saying? In Zacchaeus' case. If you've got to climb a tree, climb a tree. Do something different. The very thought of climbing a tree to a lot of people might seem out of the box, and it is out of the box. But Zacchaeus he said, look, I'm short, I'm gonna do something about it, there's a tree over there, when he passes by, I'm gonna see him. In other words, I'm not gonna make do with the fact that I can't see him, and I'm, and I'm not gonna rely on other people's testimony. I wanna see him for myself. Amen. I'm not content with other people's experiences of, of what God has done and, and who he is. I wanna experience him for myself. I'm gonna climb into that tree, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. And maybe God will ask you to do something that you haven't thought of before. And it doesn't mean that you've got to fly to the utmost parts of the earth. Maybe you've just got to climb that tree. Do something a little bit different. Go that extra mile in your own experience. Whatever that may look like for <coughs> you. Just to see Jesus. Just to go that little bit further. So you climbed up the tree where Jesus was about to pass. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up, I, I find this so, so interesting. He looks up and says, Zacchaeus, hurry you come down for today, I'm going to stay at your house. Just the first part of that verse, verse six. Uh, verse five, sorry. He looked up, Jesus looked up. Now, I don't believe he looked up just because it was odd to see a man in a tree. Because when, when you have those kind of perceptions, you, I would have thought quite a few people, especially children, would, might, might well be up in the, in the tree. But I believe, just, be, just by knowing Jesus, the very fact that Zacchaeus is looking at him would, would somehow put something in his spirit to look up and see him. God, God is always attracted to those who desire him. Amen. Amen. God's presence will always come and rest amongst the people who are on fire and just want to see him, who are hungry for him. Amen. And just out of that hunger, I want to I see Jesus. I want to do what it takes, whatever it takes. I don't care what the cost is. I, will, I, I just want to be where he is. I just want to see it. God is always drawn and attracted to that kind of heart. And, and maybe, maybe the reason why we're not seeing the Lord move individually in our life could be something to do with the heart. How hungry are we for him? How hungry are we for his presence? How thirsty are we for him and what he can do in our lives? That's not to say that God always withdraws his hand. 
we could go all through the New Testament and all through the scripture, that God always shows up when people have need. Yeah. To meet with it. Yeah. And when you think of your situation, like I said earlier, sometimes we can have a desperate circumstance, but we're not desperate ourselves. Well, I've carried this now for, for 20 years. I've carried this hurt and rejection now for 10 years. It's never going to get resolved. And maybe you never will. But you can get resolved. You can get healed. You can get blessed and delivered and set free. By giving it to the Lord. Because the number one thing is that He cares for you. And He cares for me. He cares about Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, who was the outcast. Zacchaeus, the one whose society hated. Maybe some of even his disciples. Don't forget, his disciples, before they started following Jesus, were businessmen. They were fishermen. They weren't necessarily poor people. I'm not saying they were rich. They might well have been. But they were businessmen. Successful at what they did. And they would have probably would have had dealings with this man. Not nice dealings either. And here's Jesus. <laughs> As he passes by, he looks up. There's somebody that wants my attention. There's somebody that wants to... He, he was surrounded by people. Could have gone to anybody's house. I'm sure if Jesus walked here, we all would have been offering him a place to stay. Jesus, come to my house. Come to my house. I've just made some cake. Some nice, fresh cake. We would have been offering Come, come to our house. Come to dinner. He chooses to go to the house of somebody that nobody else likes in society. The lowest of the low. Ripping people off. Probably very people out on the street. Taking all their money. And Jesus chooses him. Because he's the one out of all of them that attracts him because he does something out of the ordinary. He has a heart that says, I want to see him. And I'll do whatever it takes. I'm not going to allow my circumstances to stand in the way. I will go over and above what is expected to see this one who's passing by. Mm. And so, so Jesus says, Quick, quick, quick. I need to come to your house. Now don't forget, at the start of this chapter, we said, or we read, that Jesus was passing through. That tells us he didn't have any idea of stopping by. But see, Jesus sometimes will stop off to places where he needs to stop off. He, he knows that the end destination isn't going to be re ruined because he has to stop off somewhere. He says, Zacchaeus, I must stay at your house. And Zacchaeus, understandably, runs down. He comes and receives him gladly. This tax collector. This is what I love about it. When, when Jesus gets with sinners, they don't feel condemned. They might well feel convicted, but they don't feel condemned. He loves them with an everlasting love. And the interesting thing is the reaction of everybody else in that vicinity, the Christians, the religious people, whatever terminology we want to put, put on it. When, when they saw it, verse 7, they all began to grumble. And they said, he is going to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. Now this is what happened when, when the Lord called uh, Matthew, Matthew the tax collector. And it says there, let me just get the scripture, in Matthew, Matthew chapter 9 and verse 9, Jesus went on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting in a tax collector's booth, and he said to him, Follow me. So it's not the first time he's dealt dealings with a tax collector, lowest of the low. Then it happened that as Jesus was reclining at the table of the house called, tax collectors and sinners came and were dining with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why is your teacher eating with the tax collectors and sinners? We have to, we have to remember, culturally, in those days, if you act with anybody, that means that you agree with their lifestyle, you agree with what they said and what they believed. So the idea of sitting with anybody who is a sinner, um, with this, well, anybody that doesn't know God, obviously, and you can think any strap of society, think of those people who stand in society that you think, man, they, they don't just don't know God and are and, and innocent about it, they just go in the opposite direction as well. He would have sat down with them, but culturally, they would have looked on that and said, he's sitting with a prostitute. Disgusting. That means he agrees with their lifestyle. He's sitting with the tax collectors, the drug addicts, the drug dealers, the whatever the case may, may be, the, the bank robbers, the murderers. He agrees with their lifestyle. Because that, that's what it meant culturally in those days. 
Paul says in, in, in one of his letters, he says, if, if a brother falls into any kind of sin and will not be restored, do not even eat with such a one. Because culturally, that's, that was the done thing, or wasn't the done thing at the time. And so the fact that Jesus is sat there with Zacchaeus is culturally wrong in those days. It, it's telling the people he agrees with this man's lifestyle, but that's not really the case. Right. What he's doing is he's accepting the man and loving the man Amen. to get to the point where the man says that he can really see Jesus. Amen. Because he didn't want him to just see him at the top of a tree. He wanted to sit him and see him across the table, eye to eye, face to face. Because when you do that, it changes everything. Yeah. Right. Amen. I'm just, I'm just amazed that they all began to grumble about it and complain. Zacchaeus out of water experienced favour that day. Favour. The one, he will always be known in that town as the one that put Jesus up. Fed him food. Give him the red carpet treatment. Out of anybody you could have picked it was Zacchaeus. Sometimes when God favours you, other people get upset. Yeah. When God blesses you, and you don't know why, I don't know why, I don't know why he's healed me, I don't know why he's blessed me. This time last year, the company I've been working for, we went through a round of redundancies, and, and the guy who was above me, actually we went to the same job, he got it, and, and that didn't affect anything, God bless him, he was the man chosen for the job, we worked together. When the redundancies came last year, I don't know why, he was the one that they asked to leave. And now I'm, I'm doing his job. Now, Hallelujah. praise God. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I never like to see anybody lose their job. Okay, I'm not saying that. He has now got a job, a better job than what he had previously anyway. So praise God for that too. But God, favor on our lives sometimes will do things in our lives that we don't understand, can't explain. And yet that's the way he chooses to move. Hmm. And when, when he does that, don't be surprised if people get upset. I've been coming to this church for, for 25 years. Well, that's nothing to do with it. <laughs> I, I've been putting money in that offering for the last 20 years that I've been in this church. Well, I've never had my tax bill. That's got nothing to do with it. Amen. In fact, probably because you've got that attitude, that's probably the reason why you haven't been blessed. Because right. <laughs> God looks at the heart. And we all get it wrong sometimes. But get into that place where we allow him to work the, the fruits of the Spirit in our life rather than pushing in ourselves. Yeah. That's, right. That's when God always moves. Amen. That's when God always blesses. Yeah. And so none of us own the work of God this morning. Yeah, that's right. We just participate in it. Mm. We're partners in the gospel. Just doing what he wants us to do. Mm. Zacchaeus stopped. And said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of my possessions I give to the poor. And if I've defaulted anyone of anything, I will give them back four times as much. Now he could have said, The Lord, I'll give it all to you. To your ministry, your work, Lord. I'm a rich man, I've got all of this, these things. I want to give it to you. But he doesn't. He says, I give it to the poor. And the Lord didn't ask for it. And in fact, the Lord commends him for giving it to the poor. Now Jesus, you know, he was, he was, we could call it a traveling ministry, as we know it today. He was traveling about, he even told his disciples, I am getting ready to lay my head. I just go where the Father tells me to go. And he could have taken this money, he could have used it for great things. He could have fed the poor himself, he could have done so many great things, but he didn't ask for it because the Lord's not after our money. Right. He's after our heart. Right. And when he's got your heart, He'll direct you what to do with your money. Hallelujah. And you'll find a place to put the money yeah. when he has your heart. Amen. And the Lord, after seeing Zacchaeus, he knows the change has happened because with that wealth he's got from ill gotten gain, he says, Those who I defrauded, I'll give them back four times as much. He must have known who he defrauded. He must have had a book. How, how do you know, Zacchaeus? How do you know who you take, how much you've taken from who? He must have had it written down somewhere. And he says, the money that I've taken, I'm going to give back. 
that was a sign of the Jesus that something had happened yeah, in his heart. That's right. Is there anything that we can be thought in anybody from? That we that we stop the blessing in someone else's life. It might not be financial, but it might be through the grumbling and the complaining. It might be through discouragement. Maybe a little bit of dishonesty. All the Lord wants this morning is our heart. To come back to that place where we say, God, okay, <clears throat> I've chasing I've chased after the favor rather than the favorite. I've chased after healing rather than the, the one who heals. I've chased after the blessing rather than the one who gives all blessings yeah. in heavenly places. And that's not to say those things won't count. Amen. But they will only count and they rightfully count. When we, we get in line and we just say, God, you are number one. Amen. In my heart, Amen. in this place, in my church, in my community. To see your kingdom come on earth as it is yes. in heaven. Oh, yeah. yes. What is the kingdom of heaven like? No sickness, no disease. Will we ever see that on earth? No. Oh, in the millennium. He told us to pray for it. Your kingdom come mm. on earth as it is in heaven. There's no lack in heaven. None of these things missing in heaven. Because the one who gives all things and resides all things and blesses with all things, he is the one enthroned it. Is he enthroned in every single one of our hearts this morning? And that place that we give him in our heart, does he have 100% knowledge? Too. When Jesus came to the rich young ruler, he said, what, what have I got to do to inherit eternal life? And he said, well, I've done this, I haven't killed anyone, paid my taxes, given everything to the poor, done this, and never come into the adultery, and done this, this, and this. And Jesus said the one thing you like, give what you have and, and give it to the poor. And he wasn't stopping him from being rich. He was stopping the money from having a hold on his heart. That was the one thing he didn't do. Mm. And we can tell because his reaction was one of silence. He had a, a chance to inherit eternal life. He gave one of his riches go. Wow. He took the riches out of him. Sometimes we can have something in our heart that hold us. Some things that are not necessarily bad. It's not wrong to be rich. But when the riches are of you, that's an issue with God. When they come between you and serving a master, because you've got a different master in control, Amen. that's a totally different situation. Good. And what are those things then? And again, they're not necessarily bad in and of themselves. But is there anything in our hearts that stops us from serving the Master, mm. serving um, as we really should? And Jesus says, today salvation has come to this house, because he is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. lost. I don't know if you feel lost this morning. Do you know Jesus? Do you know the one who died to set us free? Who died on that, that cross 2,000 years ago so that we might have life? Who gave his blood, who, took, who, who stood in my stead? All I can say this morning is, I know Jesus. Amen. I know what, what an amazing Savior he is and, uh, and has been in all of my life. I know that he has saved me, he's healed me in various times during my life. Healed me body, soul, and spirit. Especially when I give those things to him that I owe on to, when I give it to him, he takes control of it. Yeah. Because what I didn't tell you about my little story was, I, th I think like most men, a lot of our identity is placed on our workplace, in what we do, in who we are, I'm an engineer, uh, I'm a mechanic, I, I work in the bank. That's what we do as men. And during, the, during that time, that unsettling time, when they were laying people off, caused a lot of uncertainty in me. What I do next? And you know, like I said, the guy who loved me was the one who lost his job. In all, in all honesty, I should have been the one that should have gone. Until I got to that place where I said, okay, Lord, I just know. I just know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. Like Paul said, I am absolutely persuaded. In other words, you, you can't convince me. 
I am persuaded that what I've given him, he will keep back. Uh, and whatever comes, I know if it's not this job, you provide me with something else. Hallelujah. If it's not this place, you give me something else. If you don't bless me right now, I'll still praise you because you are good. You are good. I don't praise you for what you give me. Nobody wants to be lauded for that, do they? We don't want to be appreciated by our husband and wife just for what we do. We want to be appreciated for who we are. When we, when we pass away, I don't want them to say, well, he did this for me, uh, and he was like this for me. I'd love for people to be able to say, he was a good man. He was kind. Yeah. He was a man of good of mind. I want them to talk about me, not just for what I do. And sometimes, I think the Lord, not that he gets upset, not that he, he's bigger than that. But I think the Lord wants us to know him for who he is. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And then we can talk about what he's done. Oh, yeah. And I wonder if there's anybody in this room. Let's just bow our heads for a moment. I wonder if there's anybody in this room that has never met Jesus or never really given their hearts to him. There's a chance for us to do that this morning. Just to say, Lord, I want to know you. I want to surrender my life to you. I realize that in my life right now, just like Zacchaeus, there's all that sin, those things that offend you, those things that separate you. I don't want those things to stand between us. I, I've heard about you and doing the worship. I felt this hurt. I want to know who you are, Jesus. Will you come into my heart and come into my life? Just wonder if there's anybody that would like to do that this morning. Would you just like to raise your hand and say, Come into my life, dear Lord? I'm not going to ask you any embarrassing questions. It's an opportunity to say, yes, Lord. Anybody want to stand? Before I hand back to the pastor, maybe those of us who know the Lord then, I just felt something in your heart as we were talking about Zacchaeus. Maybe you put up barriers in your, heart, in your life or allow barriers to take their place of of serving God. Well, because of this, Lord, I can't do it. Because of that, I can't do it. Lord's looking for a commitment this morning. We're not going to allow anything to stand in our way to serve in Him. Whatever barriers we've, we've got in our lives, they're not going to stop us from giving our all, our all to Him. I just wonder if there's anybody in this room who would just like us to, to pray. Just raise your hand right now and we can pray. I'll just pray a general prayer, and we just believe that God will do what He wants to do in our hearts and in our minds. Is there anybody that says, God, God, I just want to give you everything this morning. Gentlemen on the front. Anybody else? <clears throat> because there's no barriers there. So we go 100%. As if there's no barriers, there's nothing stopping us from doing what God's told us to do. Amen. If I invite our pastor, we just pray. We just pray in faith for you. Father, we come to you this morning like Zacchaeus. Just come hungry for you. Come hungry for your presence and for your word. And we just ask you, Holy Spirit, that you will dwell in our hearts. And for those especially that have raised their hands, these three people, I just pray, whatever barriers hinder, Lord, as we recognize them this morning, those barriers, we just pray, will be brought low in Jesus' name. Those mountains will be made a plain. And we just command them in Jesus' name to be brokers right now in Jesus' name in their life. There will be no barrier, there will be nothing lacking. Whether it's finance, education, whatever the case may be, those feelings of inadequacy, we just break them in Jesus' name. They are to be there no more. Because we know that your spirit will dwell inside of us and cause us to walk in ever abounding grace, ever abounding love. And by the power of your spirit, we commit ourselves today to walk in your power and in your grace. Yeah. We just thank you for your Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is just moving mm -hmm. just gently on people right now. Just, um, let's, just, let's just pray. Let's just continue to uh, speak. Um, just, just speak in tongues if, if that's what you want to do. Just pray quietly if that's what you want to do. But let's just call it to God this morning. Let's just reach out to Him by His Spirit.
Santuji. Um, while he was speaking, both John and I, at one point, both felt that you gave a prophetic call to somebody. It was a, it was a time quite early in the night when you were talking. It was when you were talking that he climbed up into a sycamore tree when he got up there. And I just felt as I was sitting at the back there that God it was speaking to one or two of you this morning saying it's time that you stepped up. It's time that whatever is stopping you because you've got a destiny, God's got his hand on you, but at the moment you're letting something, it could be something or someone a habit, a custom, whatever it is, it's stopping you from coming to the place that God has had reserved for you for a long time. Now he's not going to force you. He's waiting for you. But this morning I think you've got a gentle reminder that God has put his hand upon you and he's calling you. Amen? Bless you, brother. We shall see you again. I have no problem on that at all. <laughs>